All right, I got my sketchbook, I got my pencil, I got my pens. Let's get started. Oh man, I can't. I just can't. <laughs> Hello, the internet. I'm Scott with CircWorks Art Labs. Welcome back to the underground laboratory where we create robots, alien zombies, and other imminent threats to humanity. And I've got a little bit of a problem. It's been going on for a while. And it's something I really need to work on. I'm really bad at keeping a sketchbook. I mean, this, these are just some of the sketchbooks that I've accumulated over the years. Many of them only with just a few sketches or just totally blank. And I don't think I'm alone. I think there's a lot of other people out here, you guys, that are going through the same thing. So I'm hoping we can kind of work through this, this thing together because it's something I want to improve on, something I want to get better at, and I just really need to face it head on. And hopefully with your help, we can come up with some tips and some tricks, some hacks, whatever, or just uh, kind of figure out some ways to help us kind of get over that fear of that blank sketchbook. Let's work on this. So I have before me my failed attempts at starting sketchbooks, this big stack, pretty much all empty sketchbooks. Um, some might have a few sketches or whatever, but uh, yeah, I've never done real good with sketchbooks in the past, but I'm gonna try to change all that. So what I've done in order to help myself and hopefully help all of you guys, I put together 10 tips, a little list just to make it easier to digest. So these are my 10 tips to destroy or at the very least alleviate that fear of a blank sketchbook. Let's kick it off with tip number one, graffiti it up. Now what I mean by this is a lot of times when we get a sketchbook, a new one, uh, we're kind of worried about ruining it because it's, it's so pristine and everything. I mean this is a moleskin. Sometimes they're kind of pricey and you're, you're worried about ruining it. So just to get over that fear, and just to have a little fun, why not slap some stickers onto it, kind of personalize it, make it yourself. Think of it like you're a tagger and your sketchbook is like a fresh off the assembly line subway car. Yeah, you want to slap your name, put, you know, put your own personal look to it and then that'll make it yours and it'll make it a little easier once you start to sketch in it. Tip number two, use a cheap sketchbook. Now this is a moleskin, it's not a cheap sketchbook, but if that's a hurdle for you, if you're worried about you know defacing this nice fancy sketchbook, don't worry about it, just get a cheap one. This is actually one that I got for free when I ordered some art supplies or something like that, so it didn't cost me a dime. The whole idea of a sketchbook is just getting your ideas out of your head and onto the page, and if you're worrying about defacing this fancy sketchbook, don't worry, use a cheap one. Tip number three, add your contact information. A lot of times with sketchbooks, one of the things that is really hard to overcome is just what do we do first? What do we draw first? Well, uh, the first thing you can do is just, I've got, a, I've got a set of stamps here with my logo on it, so I usually pop those on, kind of similar to what I did with the stickers. But in order to get the ball rolling, what I will usually do first is just write my contact information, and you can, you know, write your name, your address, if some, you can say if somebody finds this sketchbook, you can even offer a reward if you want. But it's kind of a good habit, sort of a ritual for starting out every one of your sketchbooks. Tip number four, write yourself a note. So this is just to remind yourself that this isn't meant to be taken so seriously. My note, I just put, I hereby proclaim that this sketchbook is entirely experimental. The likelihood that it will result in anything of significant artistic value is slim to none. The sole purpose of this book is to get out as many crap drawings as possible. This book is not meant to be viewed by anyone. So why are you reading this? Now, maybe you're a little more of the glass half full type of person and you want to put a positive spin on it. So just write a little affirmation, some words of encouragement. So with this one, I just put no pressure. Hey, you know, just have fun. And uh, every time you open your book, they'll remind you of that so that you'll be in a positive state of mind and you'll get to doing what's important. And that is just getting your ideas in there, in that sketchbook. Tip number five, start a few pages in. Now, usually when we open a sketchbook or if somebody else is looking at your sketchbook, that's the first thing they're gonna see when they open the book. And that can be worrisome because you wanna start off strong and you, you don't want your first drawing to be this just crappy drawing. But if it helps, what you can do is just skip that first page or maybe go a few pages in, start drawing in your, get all your bad drawings out of the way and then you can kind of go back after you got your practice in and then you can do a real nice drawing. 
Tip number six, desecrate a page. So you start off with this nice white drawing, it's untouched, you know, you're a little worried about, you know, what do I draw? What do I put on there? Well, don't worry about that. Don't worry about the drawing portion. Just dirty it up a little bit. I took a, a little spray bottle with some ink, I sprayed it on there, and uh, so that kind of, it's already, you know, it's, it put me in a frame of mind, well, I don't have to be too concerned with ruining this page, because in a way it's already ruined. All I can do is help. So that's what I do, and uh, you know, I look at what I've done, and I'm like, well, what can I do with this now? And it kind of looks sort of like a, almost like a blood spatter, or like slime, or something like that. So I figured I'd just draw a zombie, so I just took that, you know, random, whatever you do, if you, you know, take your paintbrush and splash some stuff on, or just whatever you want to do, just scribbles or anything like that, and that'll help free up your ideas and it puts you in a frame of mind where you're you're creating and everything. You don't have to worry about oh man, I don't know, I don't want to ruin this page. You know, it's because it's it's pretty much already ruined. All you can do is uh, improve on it, and I think this is a good. Uh, good case for that because I think uh, based on what I started with I think I was able to to do something with it and I'm pretty happy with the way it came out so don't be afraid to just jot something down and uh, and then focus on your drawing and everything tip number seven highlight a hero image so here you've got a, a page or a couple pages that I did in my sketchbook with just a bunch of doodles I was trying to come up with like a super villain or something and uh, yeah there's 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 some good ones some bad ones but you know just to draw the attention of the good ones I'm gonna go ahead and focus on one of those I picked this one out I kind of like this one so I'm just gonna go ahead and ink that one and I might ink a couple of them but just help pop them out so you know it's not necessary that, I mean, you don't really need to show your sketchbook to other people. It's kind of just for you. But if you want to, you can. And if they are flipping through, then they're going to immediately zoom in on the stuff you want them to see. And this goes as, just as well for you because when you're flipping back through your own sketchbook, it kind of helps. And the first thing you see is, oh, that's a good one. And there's some other things that we're testing things out and everything. But we finally arrived on something good. So, you know, highlight that hero image. All right, we move on to tip number eight skip around so here here's a little tiny sketchbook that I did I started off pretty well I was doing like a sketch a day in this little sketchbook nothing nothing too fancy just these little images but I was having fun with it and then I got kind of far along the line you know down the line anyway and I started looking at the rest of what everything I had left to go as you can see right here and I started thinking to myself, oh, I got so much long, so much further to go. I'm never going to complete this thing. But if I would have had, say, add a sketch in the back and then one in the middle and just, you know, skip a few pages here and there and just randomly put sketches here and there, then you can kind of go in and fill the gaps and it doesn't look like there's so much more left to be done. And I think that's kind of a, a trick you can play in your mind that kind of helps. Tip number nine, start with a border. So here we are once again, the blank sketch page. Oh, what do we do? What do we draw? Well, if we just draw a little border, it, it, starts, the, it starts our brain turning and we're like, well, there's, there's a box here. What's in the box? What, you know, start go back to the opposite of people I'll tell you. Think outside the box. Well, now you can think inside the box. We got to think of something that goes in that frame. Or you can do something like this and, you know, do it a little speech balloon. So you got a speech balloon. It's got to go somewhere. So where's it going to go? What's this person going to be saying? So we, you know, you put wow. And then uh, somebody's got to be saying it. Why are they saying that? And that'll help spark some ideas. Okay, we have arrived at tip number 10, which is focus on your strengths. So everyone's got something that they're good at, okay? Everyone's got something in their wheelhouse, something you can all, it's kind of like your go-to drawing. Um, for me, I like to draw a lot of like robotics and like mechs and things, or, you know, and I, I draw a lot of figures too. So I figured I'd just do this drawing of this girl with sort of like a mech hand and, uh, because that's something that I'm, I'm fairly, fairly good at. So, you know, the whole idea of a sketchbook, you do want to push yourself. You want to, the whole idea is getting, all these different ideas and practicing it's it's the whole the purpose of sketchbook is just to practice and get better now if you're drawing the same things over and over again you're not going to get better but for that first page when you're first starting off um, it might not be a 
bad idea to start with something that you're confident in. And then after that, you can kind of start switching it up and experimenting and trying new things. But this is something that, you know, more or less I've drawn a variation of uh, for a while. I've, I've, so it's comfortable. So, you know, you get that, that drawing that you know how to do, you get it onto the page, it looks good, and it builds up some confidence. So then, yeah, at the very least, you've got one drawing in there that looks good. And so if somebody is flipping through it, they, they look at all these other sketches and they're saying, well, that's okay, but oh, this this one I really like. So we can tell uh, these other ones, they're, that's just all, all practice to building up to something here that looks really nice. And you know, I'm sure you're gonna have a lot more nice drawings in your sketchbook than just one. But uh, get, get that one good drawing out and then start focusing on the things that you really need practice on. So there you have it. Those are my 10 tips. But as I continue to finish it up this drawing, I just want to talk a little more about sketches and how I plan to use my sketchbook going forward. In the past, I've done most of my sketching just on loose sheets of paper or, you know, cut out sheets of Bristol board or whatever. And there's some plus and minuses with that. Um, some of the some of the issues with sketchbooks are sometimes that crease, that fold. Sometimes it's hard to draw on, and the page you're you're basically if you're just starting off in the beginning, you're you're drawing on this big stack of paper rather than sometimes it's easier just a flat sheet of paper. But that's something I just need to work on and get a little more comfortable drawing on you know that thickness of a sketchbook. Uh, the other thing that is you know sort of a plus or a minus when you're just drawing with loose sheets of paper is you can just toss them out if you're not happy with it and you know depending on how you look at it that could be a good thing but with a sketchbook you know you don't want to just rip out your pages one because it can kind of damage that structural integrity of the book and all you know your pages will start to fall out depending on the type of sketchbook that you have so it's it's it helps because no matter what you put in there, it's going to remain there. And it's good to kind of look back and you can kind of see your progress because if you're just throwing out all your bad drawings, then you kind of can't look back and say, well, this is where I went wrong with this one or this could use some work. And if, if, you're, if you're ever brainstorming anything, uh, that's kind of what they tell you is throw out all your bad ideas as well because some great ideas come out of your bad ideas and sometimes if you throw away something that you may think is garbage you may look back at it and there may be a hint of something great there that you can expand upon so but anyway we'll see how i do with the sketchbook moving forward and you know it's it's a good thing to kind of create a goal for yourself if you're starting off with a sketchbook and that could be, you know, either, hey, I'm going to set aside 30 minutes a day to work on this sketchbook or, you know, every morning I'm going to wake up, I'm going to do a, a quick, you know, five minute, you know, warm up or, you know, I'm going to fill X amount of pages in a particular amount of time. Whatever that goal is, you know, set some sort of goal and try to stick with that. Another thing that I am going to try to do is I'm going to try to erase a lot less and maybe even try to draw some of my sketches in pen and ink, you know, something more permanent. Um, because just going off that, what we were talking about before with, you know, this is going to be in here regardless, no matter what, you're going to draw it in there. So maybe take that to the next level and, you know, I think it'll, I think it'll help if, you know, I'm drawing in like permanent ink, something I can't erase because then there's no going back and you're, it, you know, you're creating these parameters and sometimes when you do that, you know, some, some great stuff can come out of that because you're, you're not like redoing things and everything. You're like, well, this is here. This is the way it's going to be. How do I make this work? And a lot of times it, that can spark some really cool concepts and everything. So that's something I am going to try to do. But one of the things that, you know, we all have trouble with when we open our sketchbook is, you know, what, what do we draw? You know, we can, maybe we have this block like, I, you know, I just don't know what to draw or whatever because we're giving tips on, on different things that can help you help you come up with you know, techniques and things like that for your sketchbook, but nothing really on what to draw. So if you're struggling with that, here are some things, you know, maybe maybe take the first, you know, 26 pages and just write an A, B, C, D, all the way to Z, and then each page, you know, draw something for that letter of the alphabet. Uh, another thing you can do is just kind of, you can also cut and paste and almost do a scrapbooky type thing. Like if you, say for instance, 
you went to see a cool movie, you've got your movie stub, just paste it in there and draw a picture of whatever movie you saw. Um, some of the things you can do, you know, obviously self-portraits are a good go-to. Uh, if you're having trouble thinking of something, draw a self-portrait of yourself. Maybe even draw your art supplies. I mean, they're right there while you're drawing. So maybe just draw all the tools and stuff that you use. Um, people watching is another good thing. Get out there in the world and, you know, go out to like coffee shops or the mall or airport, anywhere where there's a lot of interesting people and sketch those. Or you can do like sort of a field trip and you can go to, you know, the zoo or out in the city or the aquarium. Um, there's there's also like drawing prompt websites you can go and then give you prompts for things. One of the things that I like to do is you can take like a card set, like a card game like say Apples to Apples or Cards Against Humanity and just randomly pull out a card and it'll have something fun to draw in there, I can pretty much guarantee you. And if, if that one it doesn't work, you draw the next card until you get something that you, you do like. Or you can just scribble and see what comes out of it. Sometimes I get some of my best ideas just drawing a few random lines on the page and saying, oh, what could this be, you know? Or if all else fails, you can draw from photographs. Do a Google image search or look on Pinterest. There's tons of stuff on there, but those are a few ideas to get you going if you're struggling to come up with ideas of things to draw. Okay, hopefully that is the start of something really productive. I really want to continue on with this and make it a habit, but I want, I want your guys' help. So if you don't mind, from time to time in the comment sections, just hit me up and say, hey, Scott, you working on that sketchbook? How's the sketchbook coming? I would really appreciate that. And also let me know what you guys are doing, how you guys are coming along with your sketchbook. I really am curious, and I love watching sketchbook videos and, and seeing people's artwork. So point me to wherever, wherever your stuff is. I'd love to check that out. So I will see you guys later. That is all. Hey, everyone. Thanks for joining me here in the Art Lab. There's a lot of other great content on the channel, so click that subscribe button, and you won't miss a thing. If you're an aspiring evil genius, visit Surfboard for all your mad science supply needs and if you want to contact me hit me up in the comment section or follow me on social media i'm looking forward to it i'll see you then